Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Wyatt, aka Anakin Vader, here bringing you yet another toy review. And today, we're taking a look at the Transformers Dark of the Moon Deluxe Class Mech Tech Laser Beak. Laser Beak is part of the Wave 3 line or Wave 3 uh, series. Comes with Dark of the Moon Mudflap, Thundercracker, and uh, what's the other one he comes with? Nitro Bumblebee. There we go. Um, before, before we get any further, I'm just going to say right now in the review if you see this, please ignore it. I have a sprained wrist. So, kind of have to go along with it. But uh, I'm pumping these reviews out for you while I'm injured. While I'm injured. Anyway, I also hit myself in the leg yesterday with a hammer. But that doesn't matter because I'm sitting down. But I walked to Target so I could buy this and review it. And, you know, the things I do for you guys, the things I do, laser because what I do. And he has some piece of dust on him. Get off. Anyway, Laserbeak, um, he definitely has a much better vehicle mode than Revenge of the Fallen Ravage. Now, this is pretty nice. I really do like this. You can clip on his mech tech weapons either on the top or the bottom or on the top of his head. I like it under here with all this bulk. It doesn't really add anything. We're going to talk about his mech tech weapons now, actually. Take him off. Um, he actually has really cool ones. I like to, these look really nice on Leader Ironhide's shoulders. And, uh, they actually have this neat little gimmick where you, uh, plug this one into this one. And it's kind of hard to get it going, but get it in there and clip it. And, uh, this one will twist around a little bit. It's kind of hard to get it like that, angle it and stuff like that. Kind of to get it. I'll position your gear just right. I get this all clipped in. Correct. It's um, it's a cluster. But uh, it's, once you get it all together, I don't know why that's not there. It goes. There we go. It's supposed to sit straight. Um, you have to fiddle with it to get to do that. But uh, it's like that's the thing they do. They don't count these gears as well as they should, like this should definitely be pushed in more and they don't do their math or calculating with these gears as much as they should but uh, I guess the mech tech gimmick is early so I can't really complain the thing is that I think this is the only mech tech run I'm pretty sure that this is not continuing in any other line so one would think they'd have a pretty good anyway laser beak, he's in this really nice little hover mode I do like it a bit it does look neat playing with it it's kind of awkward because it's like just hovering and you can't move these things so if you want to go that way move them. So that's kind of cool he's fun I guess this little painted like battle paint right there like a bird face with the cocker right this is definitely out of scale it's a small deluxe so yeah Yeah, I'm actually going to get something to demonstrate it with. There we go, I got it. Um, I've just got it for later, so I don't have to worry about it later. Um, to transform them, what you got to do is pull these things down and pull out his feet. Now, there, there's these red things back here, and I don't know why they, they added these, and they annoy the hell out of me. They're just really stupid red pieces that don't do anything. They, they're they just there to annoy you, I believe. Because when you pull these down, they're just in the way, pretty much. They don't look cool. They don't add any sort of character to the figure. It's just really boring. Still, I mean, it's the figure's not boring. But with those, it doesn't do anything. They look kind of silly. So I really have no idea why they're there. What's up a little bit? I guess I can stay. Come in here, open this up, rotate this around, fold that out that way, and fold that out that way, and then fold this one out the other way. Push that down on the hinge, and uh, like that, collapse it. Same thing over here. Collapse it. Make it to the tail, unclip it, 
bring it back and fold the spikes out. Take this part and fold it into, or not, well, I guess, I guess you have to unhinge that and pull out the head. Now you can tab that back together and push that in. And there you pretty much have laser beacons robot mode. There we go. Tap that in more. Robot burn mode. This guy doesn't really have a burn mode or a robot mode, but yeah. Now I think a lot of people's gripes with this figure was the head originally, but it's definitely a lot better in person than I thought it would be. It's definitely really, really neat. I think it has a lot of character. I do um, try to visualize this, I guess, but uh, if you cut off the actual eyes, those parts, he'll still have eyes. So if you don't like the vulture look, you can and cut off these two gobbler pieces. He'll still have eyes. Those two things work as eyes, I guess. But it's, it's preference for customizers. I guess you can try it. It does have some nice detail. Nothing too extreme. His feet are uh, kind of awkward, but nothing bad. He has all the necessary articulation. Nothing too extravagant and nothing that's too lacking. Um, his neck is full of ball joints. I think he has three or more. He has one here in the head, actual head itself. Then he has another one right here. A double one right here with one on the end and another one on the other end. And then I think that moves on the inside on a hinge. So you can do whatever you want with his head. I like that. His jaw is also on a hinge. So you can open the jaw. And I didn't know it could do that when I opened it out of the box. I thought that was a great feature. So you can get some uh, pretty neat little poses out of them. His tail is also pretty poseable. So you do get some really cool poses out of them. I like that a lot. I don't know why I zoomed out on the face. His uh, wings have this nice little paint detail where it's just kind of thrown on. I like that. Like debris or dust. Oh, you actually want to can or you do or whatever. Fold out these two panels. And he has kind of like spikes on his spine, I guess. I don't know. He just adds to the robot mode, I guess. Not bad. Um, his tail has a hinge right here with a ball joint on the end of it. And it also has a ball joint right there. A ball joint right there. And a hinge right here. And a hinge on the end of that, so you can get some really neat uh, stuff out of that. He doesn't have a, uh, I guess, knee joint, but he does have this ankle hinge and this ball joint and the hinge up here, which is double for the transformation. So he just has some really good articulation. Playability wise, he is definitely the best revenge, or oh my god. Uh, sorry, I was about to say Revenge of the Fallen. He is the best Dark of the Moon toy for playability, like I can see kids just playing around with this, he definitely can get some really uh, acrobatical poses, I guess, I don't know if I'm using the right terminology, but uh, you can also, if you uh, straighten him out, or excuse this guy as a uh, demonstration, you take like a figure, and notice this, I think, I don't know if they did this just for laser beakers, just coincidence, but if you notice, all the Dark of the Moon Decepticons have mech tech ports on their arms, on their forearms. Um, so you can actually peg this into his arm. Laser Beak is kind of big, but the fact that they added the features is unneeded. I don't know if these are really mech tech ports, but they do fit the mech tech hole. Kind of big. He works more with like Leader Starscream. But uh, you can do that if you can get them balanced. I think Shockwave works better. But Shockwave was out of reach. So Laserbeak, he is really fun and really, really play uh, with a bull. A lot of playability. Magtech Forts, he has two on top of the uh, Vortex or Vortex. Oh my God. Um, these things, turbines, whatever. Two on the bottom, two on his feet. Um, he has one on top of the uh, cockpit and one on the bottom. So you, he has eight magtech ports, and you can arm him up pretty good. So Laserbeak definitely does not disappoint. He is much more impressive than I thought he would be. Very, very fun toy, and I would definitely recommend him to anyone who thinks they might like him. 
He's very different, but he does the different in a very good way. Something Revenge of the Fallen Toys didn't do that well. And I think this guy just kind of captures all the attitude he's supposed to. Doesn't go over overboard, and he doesn't do it too badly. I definitely do recommend him. He is a great Dark and Moon toy, great movie toy altogether, and he has a great articulation playability and detail and paint. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope you like Laserbeak. Dark of the Moon actually comes out next exactly two weeks from today of this recording, June 15th. So we're actually going to figure out what this guy does or find out what this guy does in the movie two weeks from today. And it's really, really exciting. Thank you guys for watching. And comment, rate, subscribe if you like the video. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.